Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and I'm really glad that we can take this time and visit again. I saw my sister Teresa a few days ago, and she's doing better. Uh, she's continuing her recovery and taking therapy to build up her strength. On behalf of her family and, and myself, I just want to thank you for re continuing to remember her in your prayers. They mean so much to her. Please continue to keep Teresa, her husband Bill, and her medical team in your prayers. Today I want to talk about adversity. Adversity seems to be a word that has characterized both my life and ministry in 2021 in so many ways. And I don't think it's something that's just me. Um, I think all of us have faced so many challenges in the ongoing battle uh, with the pandemic. I'm, I'm encouraged. We're making some key steps to a brighter future. But it is a different world today. And all of us are facing adversity and finding ways through it as we seek the path um, towards uh, that brighter future for each of us. You know, we talked a lot about it this year, but it was really a tough year for my family uh, as we lost both of my parents in February, just six days apart. You know, I still sometimes reach out and I just want to pick up my phone and give them a call. I checked in with them every day that way. I miss them. But you know, in spite of missing them, I celebrate in faith that they're finally home. They're with the Lord. My sister is facing the biggest battle of her life as she courageously is facing cancer. She's had chemo. She's had a major surgery and uh, has three more months of chemo ahead of her in the near future. But I have seen her and Bill rely on their faith like never before, and I'm so proud of her. And then just this week, I heard that one of the churches that I had formerly served may need to close. They're good people, doing God's work and serving their community. But they've unfortunately come to a place where the way forward looks painful and difficult and not many choices. My prayers are with those folks. Well, this devotional isn't a downer, but it's an honest reflection. It's an openness about how, how do we respond when we face adversity? How do we navigate life? This Sunday, we'll be looking at the story of Jesus healing the blind Bartimaeus. It's another story of adversity and how Bartimaeus overcame. Two things that I want to lift up to you as you get to thinking about this for Sunday. First of all, Bartimaeus had faith, and he acted on it. He cried out to Jesus, but the crowd kind of said, Oh, no, shh, shh, don't bother the master. You know, be quiet. But rather than be quiet, I think he even had a greater resolve. We read in Mark 10, 48, Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. You know, in my holy imagination... I think he used his maximum outside voice. And with all that he had, he cried out above the crowd. He believed, he wasn't deterred, and he took action. Now that's a lesson for all of us to remember, to keep the faith and to step out in faith. Secondly, there are persons often overlooked in this story, and we hear about them in Mark 10, the second half of verse 49. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up, he's calling you. You know, my friends, when we face adversity, we all need others to encourage us and help us. Especially when there are some folks that are just not offering very many words of hope or encouragement. And you know what? In my holy imagination, I see these other persons, these encouragers, helping him get up, clearing a pathway, and guiding him to Jesus. It's an important lesson. And I see this important lesson on both sides of the coin. My friends, we need to be open to receive the help that's offered to us. And often when someone will say, well, what can I do for you? Oh, we're, we're okay. We, and we kind of, you know, push them aside. But on the other side of that coin, 
There are times that we need to help others. I think we feel nudged to do something, and yet we beg off for one reason or another. And so this lesson here reminds us about these other folks, that sometimes we're the ones that need to be open and accept help. And there are times when we need to be the ones that are giving the help. My friends, let's learn this lesson from Bartimaeus' story. The importance of the people who helped him make his way to Jesus. And trust me, those folks will be there for you too. I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but in my opening sharing of some of the adversity that I've seen in 2021, I've learned a few lessons. The pandemic has taught me to persevere and be creative. We've adapted at every turn as we continue to be in ministry. We came out with daily devotions, set a time to pray at 410 each day. D and I still do that together and developed a phone ministry here at Wesley Church. We never missed a Sunday of sharing a time of worship. But what began with the use, yes, oh, the cell phone, okay. That's how we did our first service live. It has evolved into a whole system and process that allows us today to live stream on both Facebook and YouTube. What I think we all agree was a clumsy start now is refined with graphics and a green screen. And just this past Sunday, we reached 105 people uh, with our streaming service on just Facebook alone. Praise the Lord. You know, my parents' death reminded me that when I face adversity, when you face adversity, we can do far more than we can ever imagine. Karen and I had to deal with two services. We're still settling their estate. And I even got, again, last week, more paperwork that seems to never end. My life verse never sounded truer in these past year than when I think about Philippians 4.13, and I can do all things through him, through Christ, who strengthens me. I certainly couldn't have done it on my own, but God, God helped us in a time that wasn't easy. He helped me to persevere, and he provided the strength for each task, one step, one day at a time. My sister's cancer reminds me that when we face adversity, we need to have courage. Terry is fighting the battle of her life courageously. She's enduring myriads of tests, months of chemo, and, a, and a, just a tremendously major surgery. But she too has persevered. She's leaned on Christ's strength, and she's found courage to give her best each day. My friends, when we face adversity, we can't back down, but we must courageously tackle it head on. And finally, my friends, probably almost in a universal sort of way, adversity often takes us to an unwanted place like the potential closing of a church. But we can't look just at the last chapter, either of our life or a particular set of circumstances. But we have to look at the whole story, the, get the big picture. Certainly, as I think about this congregation, I pray they'll cherish every memory, every child baptized, every couple married, every family that buried a loved one, all of it was done within the scope, the context, the comfort of their extended church family. We must also realize that when we face an unwanted place, that God is with us, that there is a plan, even if it isn't the one we hope for. And there's a hope as these people are undergirded, as we are undergirded with prayer. And we're surrounded by love of God and others. We're going to find our way through those difficult times of adversity. So my friends, in adversity, there will be times we go where we don't want to go. But we don't go alone. God is with us. And God's people will surround us with prayers and love. I hope these reflections will help you and enable you to do a better job at facing adversity when it comes again into your life, for it will. With God's help, we'll find our way through as we persevere, as we keep the faith, have courage, and are reminded that God is with us. May God be with you 
May God bless you and keep you always. Amen. A few things to share with you about some things coming up in our parish. Uh, Sunday afternoon is the memorial service for the Mary Speck Williamson family here at Wesley Church. Visitation will begin at 1 p.m. and the service will follow at 3. Our prayers continue with Mary's family. If there are those of you that can't attend the service, uh, it will be live streamed on both Facebook and YouTube beginning around 3 o'clock. Men's breakfast uh, is again happening on Tuesday, October 26th at 9 a.m. All men are welcomed, and I hope you will join us for a wonderful time. Uh, we have a tasty breakfast and some great fellowship. All Saints Day is coming up quickly. Please smoke, submit photos of loved ones who have passed away between October of 2020 and September 2021. You can either give them to Martiel Edwards or to the church office uh, by October 24th, this Sunday. See the bulletin for some additional details. And certainly, we again, thank you for your support of the Wesley Preschool um, with our Weiss for School program. Uh, that program has uh, restarted again this fall as uh, schools are back into session. Last year, it, it generated $400 for our preschool. And um, our school code is in the bulletin, or you can contact the church office. But we hope that you will continue to support our school with this much-needed funding. Well, let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, adversity is something we all know too well. Help us with faith, courage, and the help of others to persevere and meet our challenges head on. Remind us that we're never alone, that you will always be there for us and helping us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for visiting with me. Let's talk again soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe. <laughs>